All right, all right, all right. I'd like to just do a little uh, video on intake manifolds. First off, I'd like to start off by saying that the engineers at GM, Ford, and Chrysler weren't stupid like some people think. They actually, uh, you know, made a decent dinero to uh, design this stuff and they had their reasons for it. So, starting off with an Oldsmobile intake, they're all very similar. This is a smog intake. It's very flat. As you can see, it has to make a sharp turn on the intake runners to go down into the head. Not the best situation for performance. Now if you go to an older one, it's the same setup. So a person would think, well why would they design it like this? Even a W30 intake is exactly the same intake except cast of aluminum. Well, the reason being is hood clearance. They couldn't have it any higher and clear the hood. So, for performance, it's not the best setup. Over here, I have a Cadillac 500. As you can see, it's even worse. Look how they have to make almost go up and back down to enter the cylinder head, all the runners. It's almost like, uh, think of a Ford flathead. How bad they were for power compared to an overhead valve engine and being the same reason they had to come up and then do a 180 degree turn back down and that's kind of the same setup so you know for performance these intakes aren't the best and uh from the factory uh, due to hood clearance they couldn't really do much else about it so if you can't fit any other intake you're kind of stuck with this. You could do some modifications with porting and stuff, but still the, the original design is a flaw for power, but they were kind of stuck with what they had. Now going to look at some other intake manifolds that are factory. This is that poly. Look how it's designed. It's very good. To tell you the truth, an aftermarket intake in a stock application with cam and everything would probably have very little gains over this one just because the factory design is great they must have the hood clearance and uh, what else the the weight is the only thing you really gain and it'll probably dissipate heat better being aluminum Buick nail head look at that look how the runners enter beautiful design from factory again aftermarket intake probably won't gain that much now you, we're going to go look at some performance intakes. This is an ancient old wheel and dual plane. And uh, probably similar to like a performer. It's got a little hall, a taller carb height. But the performer car, uh, intake by Edelbrock is designed for, you know, basically stock engines. And... Uh, to tell you the truth, on a lot of motors, I think Pontiac being one and uh, Oldsmobile small blocks being another, the performer intake is almost a complete knockoff of the factory intake manifold. So a dual plane intake, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you do to it, they're not designed for high RPM. They have the performer RPM, is which I usually go with, and a performer RPM is very similar to a performer except it has a cutout in the divider. So let's say you're at a swap meet and all you can find is a performer because that's all there is and you know guy picks it up for cheap 50 100 bucks but uh, he wants to scream it a little more on the top end. You can cut the divider down or you can put a one inch open spacer. Same goes for here if you have the hood clearance and you can't afford a new intake and you want to liven up the top end a one inch open spacer will definitely help you out there. Um, four hole spacers, I've ran them before too. I don't think they do as much on the top end, but I think they improve your throttle response and maybe down at the bottom a little bit, could be wrong. But uh, that's my take on it. And as for single planes go, this is a single plane intake. Why am I running a single plane intake? Because the motor is set up for it. It's got a fair amount of cam. It's got a 3500 converter. So why would it want a dual plane when it's never going to see where a dual plane shines? 
One intake manifold manufacturer that uh, gets a lot of hate is Offenhauser. You can pick their intakes up quite cheap. And are these bad as people say? No, they're not. They're, uh, they were a leader at the time. Sure, their technology is 40, 50 years old, but for competition use, I bet you their intakes will hold their own still today. And the reason being why they got a bad rap, here's an Offenhauser here. The reason they got a bad rap is because guys would get uh, portasonic inlet takes such as this one. They throw it on some clapped out small block chev and they'd say their motor's a dog. Well, you don't have the right setup for what you're running. Just give me a sec, we're going to compare this with some more modern designs. Now here is a Victor Jr. for a small block chev. Look inside. See the runners? Here's an Offenhauser. Look inside. Now, is it, you think there's that much difference? No, there isn't. They're, they'd be very comparable. I bet you they would be within a couple horsepower of each other on the same motor. So, don't overlook these ones. Um, there is an Offenhauser intake called uh, Dual Port. And people put them on and say, oh, that's a shit intake. A Dual Port, it has a separate runner on the on the primary to the secondary. And that intake manifold was designed for gas mileage. Their idea was to have very high port velocity through the intake runners being so small for the primary. And you know, if it was jetted properly and things like that, it would be an awesome intake manifold for fuel mileage. As for power, no, but if what they were designed for, they're great. So don't pick up a dual port thinking you're gonna be running it on a quarter mile car. It would be a great for a motorhome, tow rig, uh, just a daily driver. It would be a great setup. But yeah, I just wanted to show, don't overlook these intake manifolds. So just hold on a second, I'm gonna show another intake. All right, now we're going way back to what your granddaddy hot rodded with. And uh, this is an old Fenton for a flathead. It has in its own runners and it's a dual plane design. And let's say a guy wanted to wake it up on the top end, I would put open spacers on it below the Strongbird 97s and it would really help up the top end a bit. Another great factory intake for all you Mopar guys watching, I've proven this back in the day, is the mid 70s era, I don't have one, I used to have one, I sold it, is a mid 70s era, um, small block Chrysler, like a 360 intake for the thermal quad. It's quite high, it has nice runners, but it'll fall on its face by about 45, 5,000 RPM. But to tell you the truth, if you have a stock 360, that's all that motor is gonna spin anyhow. So you can put all the intake you want on it and you're just gonna kill power. That stock one will hold its own with any of those at that power range. If you were on a budget and you had that intake manifold and you wanted to get a little more of the top end, same thing, go with an open spacer. Now here we have a tunnel ram. The tunnel ram is for race use pretty much only. Uh, you can run them on the street and look at the angle of the runners. They're nice and straight directly into the head. Now this is a single four barrel top tunnel ram and when I bought this I didn't know as much as I do now. And look how the carb lines up with the runners. It's horrible. It's going to hit a dead spot right on the bottom so it's got to do a turn. So to tell you the truth, it's probably not the best setup. Now if this same intake had two four barrels and they're directly lined up with those runners, she'd uh, hold its own. And um, yeah, I wanted to also I'll talk a little about carb size. Now with two four barrels, it doesn't work out the same as a single four barrel. For instance, if you had a single 750 or 850, it would probably be equal to about 500, two 500s. Don't ask me why that is, it's just the way it works. And uh, you know, you can go as, for the most part, as big as carb as a guy wants. And all you gotta do is jet it down. Is that the best idea? No, you're not gonna gain any power. Are you gonna lose power? No, but you'll make it a lot less, more drivable in the street. It'll have a less vacuum signal and it won't have the responsiveness a guy would like. On a 455, olds, being that they don't rev that high because they're a four and a quarter stroke motor factory, um, you know, 5,500 is all she's going to write. So uh, if you had a 750 on it, 
you'd probably be fine. And uh, I run a 750 on my 488 and the mount the heads flow on the exhaust side and the mount the RPM they turn, I don't think there would be a lot of gains above that. And the throttle response with a 750 on a motor like this is just unbelievable. Like uh, they just tip in so nice, it's, it's just uh, a beautiful thing to drive. So if a guy's buying an intake manifold and he's got a stock motor, a lot of people are going to go for the performer but like i say the performer isn't that much different than most factory intake manifolds so you know a guy could put a open space or something on his factory one as long as the runner design is decent and he probably wouldn't gain a whole lot i always go if i'm buying a new intake for a more factory style engine like maybe a little cam and that's it i go for the performer rpm and it's got a taller deck height it's got a nicer angle on the runners and it's got the divider on it, so you don't need a carb spacer. That's already done for you. If you did uh, cut the plenum down on just a plain performer or put a one-inch open carb spacer, it would be neck and neck with a performer RPM. So that's my take on intake manifolds. Um, the old, you know, the old way of thinking was high compression, lots of cam, lots of carb, and def it works. Are they the best running motors? No, definitely not. But uh, yeah, that's my take on it, and uh, choose wisely. They also make, I don't have one because I try not to buy that kind of stuff, but they make those crosswind wind intakes now, which are a knockoff of uh, Edelbrock Air Gap. Now a guy thinks he's saving a few bucks by running that intake. Take a mirror and look down the ports. They have the worst casting ever. I'm surprised they don't have vacuum leaks, and they choke off in the corners. So, yeah, another thing that you guy thinks he's doing himself a favor by buying, but uh, really you're not gaining anything. So look for fa look for used intakes of uh, proven manufacturers and buy the proper intake for your application and you'll be a happy camper. The, the key to having a happy motor is to have all your stuff matched. Like I say, don't have a, a low revving motor like a junkyard big block that has no cam from smog era and put a tunnel ram on it or a big single plane because you're not going to be happy. Same thing goes. Don't build a 11 to 1 compression 283 or a 289 or a 273 and then throw a dual plane intake on it that's all, all said and done by 5,000 RPM. So hopefully that's some food for thought. You know, there's lots of ways to skin the cat, but I just like to give... Uh, give some of my input on it because i've seen a lot of motors that could have had a lot more in them that uh, had the wrong setup and a lot of guys think a bunch of intake is just uh, looks cool and it's a way to show off but at the end it doesn't show off much when it just falls on its face and bogs off the line and uh you get beat by an old granny car all right eh? till next time